We're moving on to Natural Selection 1.3, Exploring Variation and Distribution in Populations. I'm going to introduce you to our digital model, the Natural Selection Simulation. The reason scientists use digital models, like the sim that we're about to use, is that it allows them to look at things that are too big or too small, or in our case, take a really long time. If we want to look at populations and how they change, it takes hundreds and thousands and millions of years for the population to change, but we can see changes in a very short amount of time in the sim. If you're able to log in, go ahead to 1.3 Activity 2 and launch the Natural Selection Simulation and follow along. We're going to explore the sim and get to see what tools it has. If you're trying this exploration at home, what I want you to consider is what do the different buttons do? What do you notice about what you can change? And are there any questions? If you're not able to log in, don't worry, I'll take you through the sim. This is my cat, Akimbo. He's decided to join us for the next little part while we explore the sim. There are four main things that you need to know about the sim. The first two are in the build mode. There are two different things that you can build. You can build abiotic and biotic. So abiotic factors are all the non-living parts of the sim. The temperature, the rainfall, and the surface color. The second thing to know in the build mode is that you can change the biotic factors. We have three organisms in our environment. We have thorn palms, osterlopes, and carnivons. We'll look at all of them closer in a little bit. The thing to know though is they have different traits and we'll look at differences in those traits. The third piece to this in is the run mode. This is where you see what happens based on the environment that you've set up. And the final step is the analyze phase. This is where you look at your populations and their different traits, and you can see how they changed over time as well. Now that you've seen the tools in SIM, let's try it out. So I click on run, and I can see our different organisms. So I've got ostrilopes are the little bird-like creatures, carnithons are the big red meat eaters, and the thorn palms are the treats. So these organisms aren't real, but they're based on real organisms. The idea being that you have a plant that does photosynthesis, an organism that eats plants, and an organism that eats other animals. They need energy in order to survive, and they also reproduce. So we can use these organisms to look at changes over time. Now we're going to try some missions in the sim. Again, if you're logged in, go ahead, pause this video, and try them on your own. But if you're not logged in, don't worry, I'll take you through the missions right now. Our first three missions are all about the thorn palms. So I'm going to turn off the ostrilopes and the carnathon so that I can focus on our thorn palms. Okay, so my first mission with the thorn palms is to have all of them have medium thorns. So I look at their thorn size and I can see all of them have medium thorns. So then I look around at them and I can see these little spikes on them and the size thorns that they have. So the second mission is to have many different sizes of thorns. Okay, so I look down here and I see this little bar that says variation. If I move it over to low variation, now I can see that I have a few different thorn sizes. If I move it over to medium, then I have even more different thorn sizes. If I move it over to high, then I can see that I have all the different thorn sizes. So I look at this, and now this one has thorn size 10, so I can see it's really spiky. Kind of reminds me of my cousin when I had a mohawk. Right, and here's another, this one is thorn size 7, thorn, another thorn size 7, right, and so I can see that we have a different size thorns. This one is a thorn size four, and I can see it has barely any spikes on it at all. Our third mission with the thorn palms is to have many short thorns, sh short thorn palms, a few that are medium, and none that are tall. So I'm gonna leave them with a lot of variety with their thorn size, and I'm gonna switch to height. So right now, they're all the same height. If I wanna have many that are short, a few that are medium, and none that are tall, I'm gonna bump up my variation a little bit to medium, but now it's kind of spread out and most of them are medium, but I want most of them to be short. So I'm gonna drag this over and then you can see that more of them are now gonna be short, a few of them will be medium and none will be tall. So now I look at this one and it's a short little thorn palm. And so I can see this, these differences in the height of the thorn palm. Our next two missions are with the ostrilopes. So I'm going to get rid of the thorn palms and I'm going to bring our ostrilopes back. So our first one is to change the color of the ostrilopes. So I'm gonna to switch to the color and I can see right now I have no variation in the color. 
and so they're all color number five. So I look at this and color number five looks like a green. So I wanna have blue, green, and yellow. Okay, so if I move the variation up more, now I can see this one's yellow. So this is color number eight. Okay, so yellow is a higher number. Green still yellow is number five. So that's in the middle is green. See if I can find some other colors. Oh, here's kind of a blue. So this is color number three. So what I figured out is the low numbers, these are blues, the middle numbers are greens, and the high numbers are yellows. Then I wanna make it so that one of my features of the Australop has a lot of variation, and one feature has no variation. So I'm gonna try armor. So right now the armor has no variation, so I'm gonna make it so it has a lot of variation, okay? So then when I look at the Australops, I can see these little spikes on their back, and how much armor it has. Oh, I can't really see the spikes on that one. Here we go. There's some, oh, uh, there's some big spikes on that one. So that is the armor nine. Right, so it's got some big spikes on it. So I have lots of variation in the armor. And then neck length, I have no variation. So all of their necks are the same length. Our last two missions are with the Carnathons. So I'm going to remove the Australopes and bring the Carnathons back. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit until I oh, can find some carnathons. There we go. Okay. And what I wanna look at is having a lot of fur and some with medium fur. So I already figured this out with the Australopes that in order to get that, I wanna to move to medium variation. And this time, instead of moving the distribution to the left like I did before, this time I'm going to move it to the right. And so I can see the Carnathons now have a bunch of fur on them. And some of them have a little bit less, right? So most of them have a lot of fur and a little, some of them have less fur. Okay. And our last challenge with the Carnathons is to have the maximum variation possible. So I'm going to go with poison resistance and I'm going to go with the maximum variation. And so they each have a different amount of poison level resistance. So this one's a level nine, which means that it can withstand a lot of poison. This one's eight, so it can also withstand a lot of poison. Let's see if we can find one. Poison resistance two, which means that it can't stand up to much of the Australope poison. Those are all the missions for today, but in future lessons, we'll look at the organisms interacting with each other and see how their populations change over time. As you watch the video, listen for why we use histograms and what it shows us about variation. Biologists use graphs called histograms to show variation in populations of organisms. Let's look at a population of Australopes to understand how histograms can show variation. If you look at the Australopes, you can see that although they are all from the same population, they are all different from each other. They have different traits. For example, the Australopes vary in color from yellow to green to blue, and they have different amounts of fur on their bodies. Their necks range from very short to very long. These are examples of variation in the Australope population. If the population is broken into groups according to a single feature, such as the length of their neck, and they line up according to the trait of how long their necks are, we can see how many individuals have short necks and how many have medium, long, and very long necks. The lines of organisms are like bars in a graph. The taller the bar in the graph, the more organisms that have that neck length. This type of graph is called a histogram. This is the same histogram represented in a different way. It shows the same variation in neck length within the Australope population. If the Australopes are grouped by a different feature, the shape of the histogram will change. Now the Australopes are lining up according to color. You could count how many Australopes are each color by looking at every individual Australope, one by one. But using the histogram is easier. One quick look shows that most of the Australopes in this population are blue, some are yellow, and a small amount are green. Histograms help biologists understand the variation of traits in a population. They are also useful for comparing two or more populations 
or for investigating how populations change over time. Hopefully that video helped add to your understanding of three more important words, variation, distribution, and histogram. Variation is any difference in traits between individual organisms. You saw lots of variation of the australopes, right? There are different colors, they have different neck lengths. All of those things are differences in their traits. Distribution is the number of individuals with each trait in a population. So when we look at the distribution of our australopes color, we can see most of them are blue, Many of them are yellow, and very few of them are green. And our final important word for today, histogram. So a histogram is a graph that uses bars to show how characteristics or values are distributed within a group. It's much easier to look at changes in populations if you can visually represent what the population looked like before and what it looked like afterwards. We'll use histograms a lot to show variation in populations. Let's practice making some histograms. For this, you'll need a piece of paper with a grid on it. Um, I just used a piece of lined paper and drew a grid on it, and 12 small objects that you can sort. So you have coins or Legos or building cubes, something, anything will work as long as there is variation in your materials. Here are my materials that I have that I'm gonna to use to practice making histograms. You can see I grabbed 12 random coins, and then I made a grid on a piece of paper. So whatever materials you have, works great. Okay, so we're going to start by making a histogram that shows no variation. So if I want to think about something that all of my materials have in common, one of the things that they all have in common is they are metal. Okay, and so I would sort this into one column showing them that all of them are metal. It is totally fine if your materials go off your paper, if your histogram is not big enough, especially when we're doing things where they are all one thing is totally fine. Then if I want to show low variation, I might do something like sort by color. So and then I sort them into columns based on what color they are. And you see I have super low variation because they are either silver or copper. Okay. Or if I want to increase my variation, I might sort them by their value. And so my pennies are all worth one cent my nickels are worth five, my dimes are worth 10, and my quarters are worth 25. And so I can increase the amount of variation that I show based on the trait that I select. Keep using your materials, try making different histograms showing different amounts of variation. We'll use histograms a lot as we look at what happens to our populations and how they change over time. We'll end today with our first key concept for natural selection. Make sure you record this. A population can be described by the traits present and by the number of individuals who have each trait. Again, a population can be described by the traits present and by the number of individuals who have each trait. You saw this today with our butterflies and the variety of traits that they had with their wing color. You saw this with our australopes, right? They had different neck lengths, different colors, different fur amounts. You saw this with our thorn palms and our carnathons. So anytime you're looking at a population, you're looking at what traits they have, and how many have each of those traits. Thanks for joining me today as we started natural selection. I hope you'll join me next time when we look at what happens to australopes when their environment changes. See you next time.